Let's pray. Kanimo dalay gun og amhanan nga Dios, mga pasalamat sa kami ning lang higayon nga din magasimba no sab kami kanimo sa espiritu sa kamaturan. Lord, salamat kayo sa victory sa among World Mission Conference. Salamat Ginoo sa mga challenges pinaagi sa mong mensahe. Ug salamat usab sa mong uh, kaayo nga imong gihatag sa matag usa sa mga padayon kami karon sa pagsimba kanimo Ginoo. Ano gampo kami ning imong gamiton may tili si Junior Sibunga. Siyang Sunday School karon, ang damang magsingkasing, nga doon kami makuha ang mga pagtulunan na arang makahatag ng mga kusog o kadasig sa pagpadayon ng katapusang mga adlaw gino. Nag-ampo sa kami sa mga makaigusunan, nagpadulong din ni ngayon mo silang tagan uksepte gino. O gamo kining i-commit ka ni mo, ang mong kliman ng victory karon In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very recording. We welcome you all to our Sunday School this morning. We praise God for the great victory wherewith He has caused this church to... Uh, to uh, experience uh, with our recently concluded missions conference. Remain standing, please, and let us open our Bibles in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. We are in our series, Real Church, and uh, we are glad we are happy that we can start another lesson this morning, okay? Uh, Ephesians, chapter 4. We shall be reading together the verses starting with verse number 14 until verse number 16. 14, 15, 16. Together now in verse 14, ready, go. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to that effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. Thank you. Please be seated. I want you to open your Bibles in Galatians 6, 9, and 10 because this... This, in this, we have our memory verses. Galatians 6, verses 9 and 10. That is our memory verses, okay? Let us read together Galatians 6, 9 and 10. And uh, let us memorize these verses, okay? Galatians 6, 9 and 10. Together now, ready, go. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Again, again, ready? Recite. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, if we shall reap, we, f we faint not. So we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Our lesson this morning is the sixth in the series, Real Church. Real Church. And this is, our, the title of our lesson this morning is Real Relationships. Real Relationships. Okay? So if you have uh, not... Uh, Got in of, of, of the outline of our lesson this morning, raise your hand. One of the men will give you a copy of the outline. Just raise your hand. One of our men will give you a copy of the outline. Make sure you have a copy of the outline. Okay. This is now the sixth lesson. And if you look, up, uh, look at the opening paragraph, I am going to read uh, this for you. Follow me with your eyes, with your, with your outline. With you now, authentic church life requires authentic relationships. Because the local church is made up of people, we must learn to function properly in our relationships with one another. In this lesson, we look at three types of believers. Three types of believers who are part of every church. And we will study three passages from God's Word that instruct us on how we can best grow strong relationships with these Christians. 
the goals of this lesson are number one know the value of authentic relationships within the local church know the value of authentic relationships within the local church number two second desire is have a desire to invest have a desire to invest in relationships rather than merely receive from them and number three commit to following god's specific specific instructions of love god's specific instructions of love specific instruction of humility and encouragement as we reach out to various types of christians there are three points in this lesson which are the three types of christians themselves okay the three types of christians willful offenders wayward believers and willing servants willful offenders wayward uh, brothers and willing servants these are the three types of christians we can find in the church and ephesians chapter 4 our text gives us three core truths about the spiritual body of believers three characteristics that we can see in this relationship of grow growing christians our topic is actually relationships how we are related to one another how we are going to nurture that relationship in order to uh, maintain a harmonious relationship so that god can effectively use us in further furthering his kingdom here on earth okay in verse number 14 of our text ephesians chapter 4 there is a developing maturity that help us hold fast to our faith developing maturity that helps you and me hold our faith in christ most especially during trials and hardships that is verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro we can stand uh, with uh, with strong doctrine and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men that we be no longer like that in verse number 15 we see that there is devotional growth in our love for god and for one another notice in verse 15 the bible says ephesians 4 but speaking the truth in love speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even christ even christ we speak of the truth in love not out of hatred or out of disappointment and frustrations in verse number 16 of our text we see that there is demonstrated love as we work together to edify and build up one another verse 16 says from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love increase that is why one of our during our prayer, prayer meeting the idam umis anang prayer request more families to be added to the church increase in the body so the local assembly or called out assembly or in the greek word ecclesia is actually a gift from god we are a gift from god to the lost and that gift will lost its purpose if we are not going to reach out for the lost because we are a gift of god for the lost for the unbelieving people in this world and we as a church are uh, are a guest to the lost people of this world therefore we have to fulfill the great commission that god has entrusted to his church and a look uh, a closer look into ourselves this morning 
Let us look ourselves in the types of Christians that compose the church. Let us, uh, uh, will allow us and will help us maintain a harmonious relationship among us, thus making you and me effective in winning our battles. Okay? The first point is about the first type of Christian. The first type of Christians, number one, willful offenders. There are members of this church which are willful offenders. Okay? So, inasmuch as our aim, our aim is really to develop a harmonious relationship among us, but there are willful offenders. So, we have to acknowledge offense. We have to acknowledge offense because there are willful willful offenders acknowledge offense because whether we like it or not even godly and spiritual christians occasionally offend each other do you agree with me we offend each other okay that's right ah the apostles themselves some of them were offended by the actions of some also I want you to notice when the mother of uh, the CBD, CBD children uh, came to Jesus Christ, what was he requesting Christ for, his two, for her two sons? In Matthew chapter 20, verse number 20, this is what happened then. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons. So the mother was the one leading and together with her, her two sons, James and John, worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. Verse number 21, And Christ said unto her, What wilt thou? Nakaituyo na ko. And she said unto him, Grant, grant that these, my two sons, me sit, the one on thy right hand, and the other on the left in thy kingdom. Oh, what a great request. For the mother of the Zebedee children, that was a profound request. That was great for her children. And in verse 24, and when the ten apostles heard it, they were moved with indignation. They were moved with indignation against the two brethren. So, do na nay mga offense kani adto pa. Do na nay mga offense kani adto pa. What about Paul and Barnabas? They were offended at each other. The, court, the contention between them was so uh, great. In Acts chapter 15, open with me please. And in verse number 39. Acts 15, verse number 39, Paul and Barnabas, there was an offense also and animosity between the two of them. The Bible says, Acts 15, 39, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and called and sailed unto Cyprus. So, what was the contention? Why were they offended? Because Barnabas in the second journey would like to take up Mark with them, but Paul disagreed. He said, no, no, no. That guy left us. He left us while we were in uh, Isha Minor. And uh, he went ahead. The only in Asia. Dili na to nada doon. But naglali sila. And so, there was offense between the two of them. What about Paul and Peter? Paul and Peter also. In Galatians chapter 2, verse number 11. Open with me please there. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 11. The contention, the offense and that was made uh, between Paul and Peter. Galatians 2, 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, Paul said, I withstood him to the face. This is a heavy statement. I withstood him to the face 
because he was to be blamed. See? I withstood, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Verse 14, But when I saw that they walk not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all. And what was uh, Paul uh, telling Peter and the rest of those who listened to, them, to him? If thou, being a Jew, to Peter, livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? So, contentions, offense, are, are happening before and so also here today. It can happen. The Lord Jesus Christ knew that offense can happen among Christian brothers and sisters. Virgin. Okay? That's right. And because of this, the Lord Jesus Christ dealt with this issue in Matthew 18. Okay? Open now with, Ma with me in Matthew 18 and uh, particularly verse number 15. In Matthew 18 verse 15, what does the Bible say? It says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, why would Christ give this warning? If thy brother would trespass against thee. Because it is possible that we can do wrong against a brother. Or it is possible that a brother can do wrong against us. Kay Ogdili pa ni siya real, real, dili ni siya hisguta ni Jesus Christ. Okay? So, if thy, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. So, we also know that we can easily be offended. As much as we do offend others also. We are easily offended and we can easily offend others. By our actions, by our decisions, by our words, by our negligence, peting daghang rasonis. Why you and me can offend others, and why we are offended ba from others in the business uh, circle, in a lot of things, even among visiting staff of the church, there are offenses. Okay, so we uh, we know that we can easily be offended as much as we do offend others also, and humanly speaking. On the matter of offense, we try to justify ourselves when it happens. Huh? Money atun justification that the other fellow is greatly to be blamed. Kumun ka na siya. Nga nung nga, nagbungol ma mong duha, siya manggod. <laughs> Bisag unsao na dan. Ako manggod, tagsara na siya. Most, uh, in most cases, siya manggod. Siya manggod. Na offended ko niya kay Okay? So, humanly speaking, that is natural. But the Bible is very clear. Let us look at the Bible and let the Bible uh, teach us how you and me should handle and should look at offenses. Okay? The Bible is very clear that the lack or absence of love of God's Word, lack or absence of love of God's Word is the reason why you and me are offended is the reason why offenses are happening among Christians. Why do we say that? Why do we say that it is the lack or the absence of love that is, reason, that is the cause of offense in the church, even in the family, even among our friends, even among our relatives? It is the lack of love. Because in Psalm 119, Verse number 165, some of you have memorized this verse. What does Psalm 119 verse 165 say? Great peace. Great trabagyo, dilibagyo kay gamay-gamay nga peace. Great peace have they that love thy law. Which love thy law? 
And as a result of that love for the law of God, you have peace, and because of that peace, nothing shall offend them. Tanawa. So, that is the reason why we have offenses. There is lack or absence of love for the Word of God. Maugi na siya rason. Dili man ako, naaman sa Bible. Okay? Great peace have they that which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. And when this happened, the Lord commands us what needs to be done. Praise God for His teachings. Nga gituluan taon sa may itong buhaton when offenses come. And yet, troubles continue to threaten the harmony of the church because offenses are taking place and they are not properly handled. So this morning, let us look uh, at the teachings of how to handle offenses. Mas maay na nga ma-reminded ta or makat on ta para nga doon na ba yung mga offenses din yung pila na katuig? Ha? Dugay na kayo eh. Git, 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 gitubuan ng bata. <laughs> wagi tingo, wagi sila magtingkan na eh. Grabe, grabe gitingali offenses no? Kaya huwag mungkin magtingkan na eh. So this morning, praise God, we have this lesson, Real Relationships, where we can look into uh, the Word of God, how we are going to handle uh, offenses. Willful offenders, okay? Willful offenders acknowledge the offense, then approach the offender, okay? Approach the offender. Letter B. If one of you is wronged by any brother in the church, you must be the first one to make the first move to go and tell the other guy's fault privately and not the other way around. Why do we do that and need to do that? Because that is what the Lord Jesus Christ is teaching in Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Notice what he says. Christ says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault. Between thee and him alone, meaning privately, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Pero ang atong mindset o ang atong normal reaction kon mo abot man ni sa ato ang kinabuhi muingon man ta aw oh, siya may nakasala na ako dapat lang siya mo duol nako madahan ako pay gisa, ako pay nasakitan ako panoy mo adto niya no uh, uh, nungka <laughs> di na mahita bo siya may nakasa so unsa ang pagasitol digit masitol Kay katosang naka, nakasa ni mo, magpanuko mo sa tuog, duol ni mo, kay siya, ah, bunalan pa lang ko, or skalitan pa lang ko, sumbag. <laughs> so, digid masitol. Lisod kayo. So, the formula of the Lord Jesus Christ, ikaw nga nasakitan, you are the victim of a wrongdoing by one of your brothers, ikaw mo'y muduol nga dunia and tell him privately of his fault. That is the formula. What if we are going to apply that uh, uh, in the relationship between the husband and the wife? Ah, uh, di ko, di ko, di ko. Nga naman, saan kayo na kong asawa, oy? Di ko ko mudool mo na na niya. Dili, ang formulas gino, kita, mo'y mudool niya. O siya saan niya, kong asawa, naghuna-huna po nga ang bana saan. Di ka, mudool saan, magbangga at lang doha. <laughs> I mean, nindut unta na siya ba? No? Di ba? Kung nang asawa, naghuna-huna nga, kana akong bana mo na isadaan. No, siya yung duol. Unya kayang bana, naghuna-huna, masad nga ang asawa mo isadaan. Di, duol sadya. Di silang duha, nagdinuulay. Wow. Dali ra kayong reconciliation. Nindot yung formulahan ni Jesus Christ, no? Pero what makes this formula very uncomfortable uh, naturally? Tungod maguna sa atong pride, garbo ba, di taganahang mo duol. Do I fear? We are entertaining some, some fear and we are anticipating some negative thoughts. 
nga kun muduol ko, ako ay ma-perceive nga ako ay sadaan. <laughs> Astan. Di ba? Have you noticed that? Kita good. Og muduol ko na niya, ako ay abi pa lang niya, ako ay nakasa. Oh, see? See the mindset there? And we have to overcome that. Otherwise, the formula of Christ's uh, reconciliation for peace, dili mafalod, kita na nga po'y biktima. Kay kapoy be kayo na mag-entertain taga rancor against anybody. Have you noticed that? Kapoy kayo eh. Lisod kayo yun. Dili ka magtingog ka niya kay you have something in the past na you cannot reconcile with. So, dili ka mo ingon nga siya mo doon ako. Go and tell him his fault between thee and thee alone. So, it is the reason why we have fear is because we are interde- we have pride in our heart. Dili kumudool niya kay abi pala niya ako isadaan. Dili kumudool niya kay basi niya kung samot panoon ang sitwasyon. Sa imo huna-huna, ngano na ka-evaluate man ka, musamot ang sitwasyon because you are holding to that pride. Because of your pride, you believe you cannot be settled. Ano mo sa nag sa pikasan? Mo nang daghan kay differences until na wagi na ka Even in the church, even in the church. Maning kamot gida. Maning kamot gitang wala gita differences. Dini sa church. Ug na ang mga gani, Lord, grasyahay taon ko, Lord. Nga ako yung mudool. Mudool ko. Kaya grasya mo na. And God will never deny you of that grace if you desire. Help me to overcome this pride in me, Lord, and gave me that grace to uh, to go to Him. Who knows in the process? Akong kita na ba? Who knows in the process ka, ah, digi ko mudool na, kaya kanak masyasa, digi ko mudool ni mo, Bradyo, kaya ikaw may sadaan. Pero, what if I'm going to be obedient to Christ's command? Mudool ko ni mo. Who knows that in the process, I discover that I have a greater contribution to the problem than the guy? Sa so, diyang nag-discuss na ba? No, ako man di ay mas dako o kuan, part sa blame. Kaya inako man siya mo ay to be blamed yun 100%, ako man di ay dako o part. But, ka... Uh, how will that uh, how will that happen during the discussion and uh, both uh, if ug siya wala siya mag-expect ikaw nga diduol niya you have to wear the cloth of humility already magsulob na kas cloth of humility parang dili mo worsen ang situation worsen man gyud siya may pagwa na lang kumo follow oh ato pa wala epekto ang 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 formula ni Jesus Christ dili epektibo ginoo man mo man na sayod dili ang formula ni Jesus Christ ang problema kita nga ni apply sa formula mao ay nagka problema in the first place okay okay so this process would require great deal of humility now the bible says if he listens then you restore your friendship with him. Ako nang luod yung guni mo. Ako na suko yung guni mo. Ako na himangod yung guni mo. Ako na hiubos. Kanan term, na hiubos. Na hiubos yung guni mo. Nga nung na hiubos man ka, kay taas man ta ako. <laughs> In the first place, di yung ka mahi ubos. O diha na kas ubos daan. Na hiubos ka, kay nag taas magugga what cause you to to take the position of uh, higher elevation pride what be lying okay so if he listens then you restore your friendship with him most likely maminaw siya if you are going to present the issue in a very humble way Labina og apologetic sa ka. Labina og mga nga. Nang luod magugunin mo, naiubos magugunin mo, or nasuko magugunin mo. And then, naakay mga statement nga, forgive me if mo na akong gibati alang ni mo. Kay nakadungog man ko nga imo kong gidao, chichichichichichon sa panadaya. Mga mga, dagang kayong rason ba? Dagang kayong mga causes. But if you are very, very apologetic, pero mo, wado ka niya nga, kakanuno na ka, kapang ito na ka, kasumbago na ka, ayaw, usa. 
Kukasa usa ang pride is of ang cloth of humility. No? Okay? Kaya dali, dali na siya musaler. But if he will not hear thee, in verse number 16 of Matthew 18, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Scriptural money. Naboth was stoned to death because Jezebel took witnesses to speak against Naboth. Kaya niingon man si Dudong, nga naman taong nagmukmuk mga diha, ang hari, si King Ahab, giing na siya ang Jezebel, siya di mangod di mangod i baligya ni Naboth ang iyang vineyard, na ibog ko siyang vineyard ba, di liman i baligya, niingon si Jezebel, maura na iimuhang Hari ko ka, mora na ikos nga nung nagmukmo ka niya. I'll handle it. And it caused the death of Naboth. Why? Ahab used the scripture. He took witnesses to speak against Naboth and Naboth was stoned to death. Awa na. Libre na yan ba na mo, mo take over sa vineyard ni Naboth. So scriptural ni siyang doon ay witness. No? But, because uh, it is important that every word may be established in the controversy. Nga man nga na ay controversy, nga nung doon ay offense, nga nung doon ay kalagot, doon ay kahibos, doon ay pangluod, nga man, importante, Mag makitaan, unsay causes. But if he still refuses to listen, then the third step is tell it to the church. I want you to see here. Na importante kay kung nakita ini. Verse number 17, the Lord Jesus Christ says, And if he shall neglect to hear them, the witnesses that you brought, if he, the faulty guy, refuses to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, notice in your, in your Bible, verse 17, Matthew 18. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. In other words, if he still ignores the church, then let, let that man be likened to an unbeliever to you. Okay? Very John? Unbeliever to you. Now, Pwede raman ang taning ingnong Christ. Let, but if he neglect to hear the church, let him be an heathen man and a publican. Again, again, again. Focus your eyes on verse 17. What I am talking here is that, pwede raman ang tag ingnong ni Jesus Christ, let him be, dili, kwad o nang unto thee, let him be as an heathen man and a publican. Nga nung gibutangan maginag unto thee. Nga pwede raman nagwa diha. Mura man o dili mausob ang meaning. Gibutangan niya unto thee. Let that man unto you be a, an unbeliever or a publican. And you know who, who the publicans were. They were the people that the Jews were uh, uh, hated so much. Because they believed they were deceived of their taxes as the Roman government would, uh, would uh, require every uh, citizen uh, in the uh, Jewish nation to pay their taxes and the publicans were entrusted by the Roman government to collect their taxes and some of them were not honest. Some of them were enriching themselves and their hatred against the Roman rule also became a hatred against the publicans. So if you were a publican uh, before, manidiri ang mga hudiyo sa mga publican. Eh. And wala gid sila fellowship sa mga publican. So Ningos Christ, og dili na siya maminaw sa church, let that guy who committed error against you, who wronged you, be as an unbeliever, a heathen, or a publican unto thee. So, unsa ibot sa botana? Unto thee, man. 
isipa siya alang nimo nga unbeliever. Isipa siya nga alang kanimo has you have reason to hate kay kuha na siya, publika na siya. But remember, but remember, the Lord Jesus Christ called out a publican to be one of the apostles. Si Matthew, publican mo na. Si Zacchaeus, come down Zacchaeus because today I am going to to eat with thee in your house. Publican mo to Zacchaeus. Now, if one, if the one who has offended you be treated like an unbeliever, because that is a command. If the one who has offended you be treated, be treated like a publican, a tax collector who was hated by the Jews before, let it be so. Why? Because it is the Lord who is commanding us what should be the recourse. But what is the brighter side of this? If that is going to be so, the, brighted, the brighter side of this is ako makang gikonsider nga unbeliever, then, I can witness to you again. Because that is what we are doing to unbelievers. Ang believers mo ay atong witnessan? Dili uy. Ang mga unbelievers mo ay atong witnessan. So, if this earring, earring, masalay pun, nga, igsoon, nga digid maminaw, unya, you will treat this, him as unbeliever, then the brighter side of this is you can witness to him the gospel of Jesus Christ. And believe it, Masya. Knowing at the back of our mind that Jesus Christ called a publican and commended a publican. He called Matthew a publican and commended Zacchaeus a publican also. So that is the brighter side of it. So, the first kind of Christians in the church will fall offenders. Then the second are the wayward brothers. Wayward brothers. Okay. Wayward brothers. These are fellow believers in the church who has committed sins and trespasses. Mga na to. Which tend to affect the credibility of the church, most especially in matters of soul winning. Nga man, mingunta. Oh, mga big mong kalag. Para nga matarong ang kinabuhi. Mga big mong kalag. Haron makabaton o paglaom ining kinabuhi ah. Haron makadawat na anang gift of eternal life. Yan naalagi mo eh. See how, how, how it will uh, affect the credibility of the church? It can affect the credibility of the church. And for members of the church who can negatively affect the credibility of the church. We call them wayward brothers. This is what we are going to do according to what the Bible says. First of all, restore them. Ayaw bag iduot noon, musamot nagbackslide. Musamot og backslide. Restore them. Okay? I want you to I want you to open Ah, Galatians chapter 6. While opening there, spiritual casualties are a reality because we have real enemy. Yeah. As a roaring lion, the devil is seeking whom he may devour. Therefore, we must remain sober. We must remain sober because as a roaring lion, the devil, the enemy, is roaring about seeking whom he may devour. And what does a Christian uh, what does a Christian do when a fellow Christian falls into sin? And how do we restore this person right in right relationship uh, with the church? Now, here it is. If there be any lapse, if there be any deviation from truth, lapse or deviation from a brightness, or if there be any sin by a brother or sister, one can be restored back to fellowship in the church, but the Bible says, 
it must be done in the spirit of meekness. It must be done in the spirit of meekness with consideration that you and me also could possibly commit such things if his attention or her attention be called so that the errors that she is into could be corrected positively because it can affect the integrity of the church. That process must be done in humility, in meekness. Because our consideration is, we also could possibly commit the same things. Mag-careful ta. Dili ta, uh, what do you call that? Ang ato ang acquisition ba, very, very, kuan sa atong acquisition, as if uh, perfect ang pagkatao. When we bring this to her or to his attention, we are mindful that we also are susceptible to commit the same things. Si David Gani, according to God's own heart, tanawa on sa'yo nahitabo, nakakumit o gadultire, nakakumit pag yung murder, tanawa rana, kita pa ka ha? No? So it must be done in the spirit of weakness. Galatians 6.1 says, Galatians 6.1, Brethren, if any man be overtaken in fault, overwhelmed, if any man is overwhelmed uh, of a particular sin, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Meaning, ayaw ang usaka backslider, gamita, aron ma-restored ang another backslider while he is still backsliding. Kaya dili mo na siya spiritual. Kanang backslider, di, na, di naman na siya spiritual. O niya, mauna i-gamiton pag-restore aning ni backslide sad. Nahinom do mo atong usa, na nag, naghilak, nga naghilak man ka, nagpatambag kay uh, muambak naman siya sa bridge. Unya ka to dai nga tambag nya ka bako na masatus bridge. So, ni solti si siyang problema pagkahuman silang duha nang ambak sa bridge. <laughs> Dili puwede. <laughs> Dili puwede nga usa ka backslider mao pa restore on sa backslider. Ye, usa king us Bible, ye which are what? Spiritual. Restore such an one in the spirit of weakness, considering thyself lest thou also be tempted. So ayaw. O nag-backslide sa ka, matintal sa ka, musamot mong duhag ka backslide. But if you are spiritual, you consider that even if you are spiritual, there is still a tendency to be carnal. Okay? So, and verse number 2, Galatians 6, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so, and so, ah, uh, uh, fulfill the law of Christ. And one of the great challenges you and me face as we live our Christian lives is setting aside everything that hinders us from running the race swiftly. God wants us to run the race with patience, swiftly. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before Him, He endured the cross, he despised the shame, and now he is sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible says, Wherefore, in uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 12, verse number 1, Busa, sadihang nakita na to, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, what is the admonition? Let us lay aside every weight, speaking of runner, ang ang, 100 meter das ka niya, pasan kag sako. Dili pwede. Lay aside every weight that will hinder you to run with patience swiftly. Lay aside, lay aside every weight. This speaks of pressures and worries. Daghang mga problema sa kinabuhi. 
And the sin which that easily beset us, this is a case-to-case -case basis, on sa may sala nga every now and then, uh, you are overwhelmed with the sin of lack of faith, the sin of magduda kas ginog, makasolve ka ang ginoo niya kung problema ron. A lot of sin that you easily so beset you and me. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. Kay wa may runner nga ang iyang focus lain, kung dili ang finish line may iyang focus. Every runner who is a part participant of a particular race, whether 100 meter dash or 200 meter run or 400 meter run or a marathon, ang iyang focus asa day, kung 12 kilometers asa day ang uh, finish line. Mamani iyang focus. I must reach the finish line. So that is also our focus. That is why we have to look unto Jesus because He's the author and finisher of our faith. And how do we look Him? Looking to Him with that joy that was set in His heart. Because that is the only strength, the source of strength that you and me can proceed with determination. The joy. What joy? One day. You and me are going to receive rewards according to what we have done to the body, to the church, to the body of Christ, whether good or bad. So, let us endeavor to make our lives to become an inspiration to others so that as a church, we become stronger in fulfilling the great commission God has set to us to do. And so, that ends the par first part of our lesson this morning. Let us pray that uh, all of us and some of us who are not able to come on time be able to, uh, to attend this uh, second part of the, uh, of the uh, lesson entitled Real Relationships. Importante kayo ang relasyon na to sa matag -usa. And we are happy that this is one of the subjects that is... Uh, taught in the Sunday school to remind you and me to become better uh, related to our brother, brothers and to heal. Kanang naadiha pa nga, nagsigi pa na ron o kuan sa inyong kasing-kasing. Mga mawagtang na na siya o niya ayok sa ligi inyong kaugalingon nga mawagtang na siya. Dili na siya mawagtang o musali kasi mong kaugalingon. Siya, Lord, grasyahay ko nga mawagtang ni Grasyahi ko, Lord, nga mawagtang ni siya. I, I still, unta o, uh, doon na pa ko inindot kayong personal testimony, but time does not allow us. So let us end our lesson this morning with a prayer, Lord. Salamat kay Gino. We thank you so much for this lesson about relationship in the church. Thank you, Lord God, that the Lord Jesus Christ addressed this issue properly. Although difficult, but we need your grace to be able to implement this if and when offense come into our lives. But Lord, the bottom line is the lack or absence of love of your law, of your word. Help us to really love your law and to treasure your law and to meditate your law day, uh, day and night so that we can uh, observe them and follow them and then we can demonstrate that we do love you by obedience. Thank you so much, Father, for these who have come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Raise your Bibles up if you are.